the organization just spent the last two years working on um, our theory framework model and ultimately a web application that facilitates digital transformation for nonprofits. Ours is not the first for nonprofits and certainly won't be the last. <clears throat> There are dozens of ways we could have actually approached digital transformation, um, but there's several things that are key to our framework and ultimately the tool that we use. Um, one is that we decided on a framework that served the needs of micro and small size organizations. So these are organizations that have little to no budget. I mean, we're talking about organizations that have certainly less than a $300 million budget, but some even having as little as $500,000 annual operating budgets. Um, the second thing of course is that you know, TechSoup is a resource provider. We essentially facilitate relationships between providers and nonprofits, and that can take on a variety of things. We ourselves even offer a number of resources to nonprofits. And so we wanted to create a framework and a solution that connected organizations directly to solutions. And so that's kind of how the framework came about. Um, our particular theory on digital transformation uses these following areas of focus for our approach. Um, we're focused on digital and cloud infrastructure, data portability, systems integration, uh, stakeholder collaboration, security focus, and communication enablement. And these are all things that are kind of topics that will be a part of today's conversations. Um, there is an intention behind each of these specified solutions. You know, digital transformation can often be about the technology, but there, there, are, there are reasons behind that technology, and there are certain other things that um, nonprofits do in order to enable the work that they do. So behind, you know, for instance, digital and cloud infrastructure, it's really about preparedness. For data portability, it's about resilience. For system integration, it's about insight. And so we, we, we provide these solutions to give nonprofits these things. I mean, and these are the same things that we're giving to you that you ultimately give to your clients and beneficiaries. So it only makes sense that Again, the reason why we focused on the framework that we did is to ultimately bring these things to nonprofits in the same way that they bring to other people. Um, the digital assessment framework, which you see kind of a representation up here, um, has been developed specifically for the digital assessment tool to enable organizations to accurately self-evaluate through questions and answers. Um, the framework consists of these six categories here, programs, fundraising, communications, operations, infrastructure, and security. Um, the segmentation of organizational function relates to technology as well as a strategic number of questions assigned to each of these categories that represent uh, key topics. Um, these key topics help us uh, essentially understand what organizations are doing and help them identify the solutions um, that are uh, necessary in order to help them improve and in order to help them transform. Um, the framework itself is intended to create a comprehensive measurement of an organization's status in digital transformation. So the other part of uh, kind of the work that we did that really helps us um, evaluate organizations is our digital maturity model. Um, and it represents our perspective on how digital transformation of nonprofits should be measured. It's used ultimately to determine at what stage of capability an organization is at since um, our particular framework is based on uh, helping organizations with digital transformation rather than individuals. Um, it's constructed of several components, which you see here. Um, the dimensions of people, process, and technology are utilized in the model's approach to acknowledge the importance of each in successful transformation. I mean, you'll see these terms acknowledged in many digital transformation models, and we felt like we really needed to address them distinctly in our model. Um, and I'll call those out uh, on the next slide. So the other, the stages of capability, the stages of capability um, uh, are the areas in which we place organizations based on how we've evaluated them. Um, we do this by using key indicators of organizational practice um, that measure capability within each of these dimensions. Um, they provide clear milestones of where organizations are at in their digital maturity. So I know there's a lot of words on this uh, slide um, and I'll help you kind of break it down, but these are the evaluation criteria we used in the pre-survey and ultimately what we use in our uh, digital maturity model. Um, these are of course kind of condensed down to make it easier to read. There's a lot of uh, indicators that are kind of behind these, but we wanted to make sure that everyone had the opportunity to 
kind of at a glance determine what stage of capability they feel that they might be in. Um, but to give you guys kind of a breakdown, uh, starting on the left in that call me an ad hoc, that is stage one, that is kind of the earliest stage of maturity. And then on the far right, we have adaptive, which is stage five, and that is the highest level of maturity. Um, one of the things I wanted to call out is that, you know, this is kind of a journey and in certain areas of your organization, you're gonna be, uh, you know, kind of less mature than others. And even if you reach adaptive, doesn't mean you ever stop digital transformation. The whole idea of adaptive is actually to continue to mature as an organization. It's just that the organization much more inherently understands the value of uh, technology and uh, being digital. Um, so, and when talking about the rows, um, there's actually six rows. Um, they represent people, process, and technology, but in reverse. So the top three rows are technology. So we have a technology approach, the state of technology, and data systems. The next row is processes, which are the process practices, and then people at, are the bottom two rows, and those are skills training and technology culture. And finally, um, as you consider which solutions you're going to pursue for the challenges your organization is facing, whether that's today or for other um, challenges your organization has, um, we really suggest you consider the following. Um, we suggest that you focus on your organizational mission. We suggest that you drive decisions by your current strategic goals. Um, you should be evaluating and optimizing existing solutions when it's appropriate, rather than necessarily pursuing new technology. Um, you should ensure that new solutions meet all stakeholders' needs. Um, we suggest that you choose solutions that grow with your organization. You know, a lot of organizations get into this habit of getting what's least expensive or the easiest, and then when they mature as an organization, they end up having to invest in a new technology or a new model or a new process. So we recommend that you choose today what will grow with the organization. And finally, the thing that we know is one of the biggest factors for success for organizations in doing digital transformation is actually having change management processes in place. And so there are a lot of resources out there um, to help you kind of identify what those specific items are, but it's a it's a really important thing to have in order to make sure that once you make a decision on a solution, that you really enable that solution for the organization to make sure it's adopted and used um, properly.